Now, in this episode of the Keto Camp Podcast, you're going to learn seven solutions to beat your carbohydrate cravings once and for all. If you've been trying keto out and you're just dealing with these cravings, these sugar and carbohydrate cravings, and you're ending up cheating on your keto journey and your keto diet, then I'm going to give you seven solutions to overcome the carbohydrate and sugar addiction for good. I'm I also have a bonus tip at the end of this episode, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Before we get into the seven solutions, I want to introduce myself here. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm a certified functional health practitioner, best-selling author of three books. I'm on a mission to educate one billion people. Dealing with sugar cravings are not fun. Speaking as a former sugarholic myself, snackaholic, carboholic myself, I used to be obese. I don't know if you knew that about me, but I was obese for most of my life. The first 24 years of my life, I was a pure sugar burner, eating every two to three hours, snacking, eating Snickers bars, drinking soda, pizza, Kentucky Fried Chicken, where my mom worked at as a, an assistant manager growing up. And I taught my cells to burn sugar for fuel. And there's something bad about that because sugar is a dirty fuel source. And if you're familiar with the ketogenic diet, you know that ketones are a cleaner source of fuel. They create less oxidation. If you look at the list of byproducts that are created after burning sugar in your cells, it's a long list. Once you make that transition and you're burning fat, breaking down triglycerides and producing ketones, it's a shorter list. So what I compare burning sugar to is this Mack truck that's speeding through the highway and it's probably not going to get to its destination safe. It has all of this smoke coming out of its exhaust pipe. It's not healthy for the environment. That's what it's like when you've taught your body to burn sugar, glucose, as its primary fuel source. Sugar is very toxic to the body. The body wants about one to two teaspoons of sugar in the blood at all times. Anything more, it's considered a toxic state and your body has to get rid of it. So then your cells start to absorb that sugar because you call the insulin troops and insulin pushes that blood sugar, the glucose, into your cells. But when you do this, it's creating all that smoke like that Mack truck that I just described. Let's say you make that transition and now you've taught your body to burn fat as its primary fuel source. You're producing ketones. You feel like a rock star because ketones burn cleaner. I compare burning ketones, burning fat, to a Tesla a cruising through the highway. It's safer for the environment. There's no smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe. It's a clean source of energy. That's what it's like when you're burning fat, producing ketones. The question now bears to ask, why am I a sugar burner? What are some symptoms? How do I know if I'm a sugar burner? Here's an easy test to know if you're burning fat, if you're fat adapted, or if you're still a sugar burner. Skip a meal and see how you feel. If you skip lunch today and you cannot focus, you are hangry, you're gonna punch somebody in the face, then that's a red flag. You are still metabolically damaged in a sense, but that damage can be repaired. So we wanna teach our body. Here are some other symptoms for hypoglycemia. When you, excuse me, here are some other symptoms when you have excess blood sugar and you are dealing with hyperglycemia. Sores that won't heal, blurry vision, excessive urination, fatigue, excessive thirst, and it's estimated that 25.4 million Americans have diabetes. 60% of Americans have diabetes or prediabetes. That's insane. That's a lot of Americans. So let's get to the, some solutions here for you to tackle these sugar cravings once and for all. I'm going to give you seven solutions here and a bonus. If you follow all seven, awesome. If you choose one or two, you'll still get results. The point is for you to have this information and then take action with it. But you got to take action with it because action takers rule the world. You could have all the best intentions in the, in the world to get all this data and say, yeah, I'm going to do that. I learned this on the Keto Camp podcast and I'm going to do it. But just thinking about doing it and not doing it, you don't get rewarded for that. The world does not reward intention. The world rewards action. 
So just saying you're gonna do something but not doing it is ineffective. It's like winking at a pretty girl in the dark. It produces no results. So I implore you to get this information and take action with it. The first tip here is cinnamon. You probably know this, I like Ceylon cinnamon. Cinnamon has an active ingredient called polyphenols. This activates your cell receptor sites and wakes up your cells by allowing glucose into the cell more efficiently. So it takes some of that blood sugar out of the blood, puts it into the cell more efficiently. Cinnamon has been used for over 4,000 years. It's high in antioxidants. It scored a number seven on the ORAC score, which is an antioxidant score. Cinnamon, uh, so many studies show that cinnamon helps with type two diabetics, the blood sugar of type two diabetics. Cinnamon for diabetes can help block the activity of several digestive enzymes to slow the absorption of sugar in the bloodstreams after a high carb meal. Many studies have shown that people with type two diabetes can experience significant positive effects on blood sugar markers by supplementing with cinnamon extract. And I have three studies that I'm gonna share in the notes of this podcast and on this YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube. I'm gonna put that, those studies in the notes if you wanna read those studies. But cinnamon has been shown to help with blood sugar. So if you want to consume cinnamon, I'm a big fan of Ceylon cinnamon and two teaspoons uh, before your meal, after your meal, just per day would help with your blood sugar. Second tip here for crushing those keto cravings is going to be fenugreek. With trace minerals, iron, mag- with trace minerals, iron, manganese, copper, and a variety of antioxidants, fenugreek is a wonderful keto herb. In a study published in the Journal of Diabetes and Metabolic Disorders, it was also observed that the control ground had a 4.2 higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes compared to subjects in the fenugreek in the fenugreek group. That means if they were not taking the fenugreek, they were 4.2 times more likely to get diabetes. So that's a great study there. I'm gonna put that in the notes. Fenugreek you could find at Whole Foods, you could buy it on Amazon, but add that to the mix. That's your number two tip here for beating these keto sugar cravings. The next one, number three, is going to be cloves. Consuming cloves can help stop sugar cravings as well. In a study, 30 type 2 diabetics were given capsules containing 0, 1, 2, or 3 grams of cloves each day for a month to observe their serum glucose levels. Researchers of the study suggested that consuming 1 to 3 grams of cloves per day is beneficial for type 2 diabetics to better manage their glucose and total cholesterol levels. So not just glucose, but cholesterol was optimized in this study. So one to three grams per day, that's what the study showed of the most benefit. So add cloves into the mix. If you have cloves in your kitchen, start cooking with it. That's your number three tip. Number four, ginseng. In several human studies, American ginseng lowered blood sugar levels in people with type two diabetes. The blood sugar lowering effect was seen both on fasting blood sugar and postprandial, which is post eating glucose levels. So what I would recommend is drinking your ginseng tea before or after your keto meals, especially if you are deciding to cheat on a keto diet and you're going to have a high carb meal, have the ginseng. That'll be some damage control. I like ginseng tea. Yogi makes a great one. Check them out. Uh, I'll put a link for them down below in the notes of this podcast and on this YouTube video. The next tip here, which is going to be the Fifth tip, L-glutamine. I want you to remember this slogan that I always talk about. L-glutamine will help you wean. It turns out that there's a certain part of your brain that lights up when you are craving sugar and carbohydrates. It's the same part of your brain that lights up when somebody experiences a cocaine craving, a a cocaine addiction. Making sugar as addictive as cocaine in this comparison. So that part of your brain lights up. L-glutamine is great because L-glutamine powder helps calm that part of your brain that lights up with cocaine addictions and sugar addictions. So what I recommend to a lot of my clients who are just struggling to make that transition into ketosis because they're getting all 
of these sugar cravings is to take 500 milligrams of L-glutamine powder up to three times per day. And the one I recommend, I'll put a link for that one in the notes down below. L-glutamine is great. It's a, simply a powder you mix with water. You could also take it whenever you're experiencing cravings and it could and it should calm that part of your brain that's just going crazy telling you to go get sugar, go get food cravings. Another reason why somebody gets cravings, by the way, when they're in keto, when they're starting keto, is because they went in and they started doing fasting too soon. So that's a, a great lesson right here. If you're, if you're starting keto and you're going right into fasting right away, I would hold off on the fasting. I would do some work to develop that fasting muscle and then pair the fasting with it. Because if you're doing intermittent fasting too soon and your body does not have that metabolic flexibility to tap into its fat stores, the brain, which has been using glucose for how many years, so many years for so, for so many people, it's going to send a signal to the body to go get carbs and sugar to fulfill that glucose spike. And when you drop your glucose in the brain too fast as what you do with fasting and you don't have the capability to burn fat and produce ketones for the brain, you're gonna get cravings. So that's a little caveat for you. It's not part of the tips, but it just came up as I was going through these. Number six here is going to be sleep. This is a big one. Sleep is very important when it comes to managing your blood sugar levels, your insulin levels. When your sleep suffers, your blood sugars increase. Sleep deprivation can cause you to have the blood sugars of a type 2 diabetic. Remember, when you're chronically sleep deprived, insulin is jacked up because cortisol is jacked up. And you have this vicious cycle of food cravings, bad sleep, food cravings, bad sleep. So you want to make sure you master your sleep I have a podcast episode all about sleep. I'll put that in the notes down below. But here are three supplements that I take and I recommend to my clients to help with sleep. Number one, Systemic Formulas DREM. It has low-dose melatonin and other herbs to help relax you, valerian root. So DREM is a great supplement. Also, Calm from Systemic Formulas is another one. And I love magnesium. Magnesium malate helps calm the adrenals, helps calm the body, helps you get ready for bed. So I would recommend any of those three supplements and also listening to that podcast episode I did all about sleep. And I also have a book called The Power of Sleep on Amazon. It's a bestseller. You can get that today. So head over to Amazon and just type in The Power of Sleep, Ben Azadi. The number seven tip, and then I have a bonus for you. Number seven is going to be, number seven is going to be master stress. Not manage, master stress. This might be brushed off by some people, but I believe it's the most important solution in this video. Love and gratitude are two of the biggest healers that we have in this world. You cannot heal a body that you hate. You could be doing keto perfectly, working out perfectly, but if you have hate, if you have resentment in your body, thinking negative thoughts, you cannot heal a body that you hate. So you got to practice self-love. You got to practice gratitude. They are two of the biggest healers that you have. Here are some methods of mastering stress that I practice and I teach my clients. Meditation. You don't have to become a monk here. Just any form of meditation that you'd like. You could just sit out on a chair and observe your breath. You could go by outside of nature and just walk. Right? Long walks are great. Deep breathing is also great. Grounding. Walking barefoot on your on the Mother Earth with your bare feet, there's gonna be an episode coming up on the Keto Camp Podcast all about earthing. That's a great way to master stress and bring down inflammation and help with sugar cravings. So I just gave you seven solutions. I have one more for you. Actually, I have two more for you. I have a bonus, two additional bonus tips for you. Number one is going to be a shot of apple cider vinegar before a carb-rich meal or just have it as a morning tonic. Apple cider vinegar is great at pulling fat out of your liver, regulating blood sugar, helping with digestion. It's a fantastic product. It might make you gag a little bit. It's, it's strong. You want to make sure that you may maybe taking a shot and you have a chaser. But a shot of apple cider vinegar before a carb-rich meal or just as a morning tonic is a great idea. I have something called the keto cocktail, which I talk about frequently. And if you drink this keto cocktail every morning, that could help with your blood sugar and your cravings. The keto cocktail is 16 ounces 
of high quality water with one to two with one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a pinch of cream of tartar, and a pinch of sea salt. Mix it all together and drink that keto cocktail. That'll help replenish your electrolytes. And that'll help with blood sugar regulation and with digestion. That's the trifecta right there. The final tip, bonus tip for you, is to perform 50 squats before a meal and or after that meal, go for a 20 minute walk. When you perform 50 squats before a meal, you activate something called the GLUT4 transporter. We like the GLUT4 transporter because it takes that blood sugar from that meal, prevents it from spiking very high, and it helps it go into your muscle cells, your liver cells, and it uses it as energy, as fuel. So less fat storage, more energy usage. The same effect happens when you go for a 20 minute walk after a meal, and it could help regulate your blood sugar. It could help bring your blood sugar down by 20%, so you don't get that food coma crash that a lot of people get. So there you have it. I just gave you an arsenal of ways to master your blood sugar. Remember, when you master your blood sugar, you age gracefully. The more often you spike blood sugar, the more often you have blood sugar sugar and insulin levels high, the faster you're aging. So I just gave you nine powerful tips to anti-age, to master keto, to get more results with keto and fasting. I wanna know, on YouTube, what was your biggest takeaway? What was your favorite tip here from these nine tips that I gave you? Put it in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe to the Keto Camp YouTube channel, and if you haven't done so already, hit the bell when you subscribe so you're notified when I release a new video. 